I'm sick of the Bushes, and I'm tired of the fucking Clintons. Just but, want new families in there. But Jeb is trying to say he's a little different than his brother. I don't care if he's different or not. I don't care if he's a flaming liberal. I just don't want another Bush. I want the name. I don't want another Clinton. Who Enough. Do you, who do you want? Who any do you other want? name. Who? Uh, Governor Dirt, Christie. Fucking sh Himmler. Any any other fucking name. <laughs> you think Christie runs? Bin Laden. Bin Laden. Okay. That would be good. Um, Do I think Christie runs? I don't, I don't know. I, mean, I don't you think know, so. No. You, don't, you don't think so? No. He wanted to, but that bridge gate is still right there probably, huh? Yeah, he's, I, I don't know if he will, to be honest. Which means he did it. Maybe. He did it. He did the bridge gate thing. I, I don't know if I really care, to be honest. I don't care in the end either. I really don't. Do they really make that much of a difference in the end? One guy, one uh, party, just seems to be just nonsense. Back and forth, just nonsense over and over again. I yeah. I don't know. I don't know. If I, it was a, a, a different party, maybe? like you know, That would be fun. I don't know if I'd vote for Rand Paul. I mean, he's, the, something the, about him annoys me. The youth will be voting for him in droves. Yeah. They like the Rand Paul. But I, I don't think he's got a shot, right? Well, he has a shot, I think. I mean... You think he has a shot? Yeah. Okay. People liked his father so much. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really care. They did. All right, we got uh, David Tell coming in in a few minutes. Is he here or no? I don't, I don't see him wandering around. Usually you see him wandering around with his hoodie on, his black hoodie and Kenny, his hat. Is he here? I don't think so. Hi, Kenny. Hi. How was your weekend? Great. Did yeah. you talk about the big prison escape? Well, uh, oh, I, I'm, I'm guys, learning right? about it. Two guys might be an inside job upstate New York. But th there's an interesting uh, bit of information in the New York Post today. Yeah. Um, you know, they suspect a, a, fem a female employee of the prison might have assisted them with their escape. And the, uh, the cop, the detective that locked up one of the escapees <clears throat> back in the day, mm -hmm. reports that he's well endowed. <laughs> <laughs> Is he? That's what it says in the post. That's what the cop says. Yeah, that's, you wow. know, he cleans up good, and he's like a ladies' man. And to be frank, I, I, I saw that they said he was a ladies' yeah. man, but I didn't read further to yeah. find out that the cop that arrested him said he was well endowed. Wow! So the the female brought at the prison just couldn't help herself. Well endowed. Very well endowed. Very well endowed. Which, guy, which one of these is this? the one on the? Oh, boy, yeah, ladies like him. So it's definitely an inside job. And, and, and Sure. And, you put that fat dick in her, and that was all it took. She's like, I'll get you out of here. I need that fat dick all the time. How, how did she help? She, I don't know. She probably gave him a key. She had some equipment, some uh, some tools. Yeah. She made sure some tools were laying around for I them. I guarantee you she's going to try to meet him and fuck him. She's probably like, look, I'll meet you somewhere, and I'll sit on that big fat dick, just clean it up a little, uh, get all the prison off it. <laughs> get all the prison off it. And then they escaped through a manhole cover, I believe. They went through the sewer right. system. That's pretty... God, I love a good prison escape. Yeah. You know, obviously these guys are really dangerous, but it fascinates me how they could figure that shit out One and, guy and pull it off. once before. Did he? Yeah. This is like the second time he's escaped. He yeah. really doesn't want to be... Imp what? I'm, I'm going to break out of this jail. <laughs> what? I, I may have found a way to break out of this jail. Uh, Let me show my giant prick to the lady. Uh, Let me get out of this jail. How, how, how are you going to get out of this jail? You found a way. I'm going to climb the wall. Punk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, speaking of impressions and prison escapes, there, there's a great movie called Escape Plan with uh, Stallone and Schwarzenegger. Oh, right. What, was it a great movie? No. Oh, okay. You scared me for a second. No. Uh, so yeah, we are just going to terminate the <laughs> gates and run, and then maybe you can punch us way through it. Maybe, oh, punch it for Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> They're piling up the impressions today. Yeah, I'm just going to uh, hop over this uh, wall. I'm feeling lucky, punk. <laughs> That's good, right? That's very good. That's right. You've moved on from Jack, which is good. Yeah, he'll be back. Um, tra so how did they catch the guy if he if he escaped one other time? I don't know. I'm sure they just caught him. These guys that escape prison, that you got to have a plan after you get out. Because I think they um, end up like going back to their what what's familiar in the end because they sure. don't really have a choice. Well, or they just there's only so many places you can go. I mean, and they just look for you everywhere. Everywhere until they finally hunt yeah, you down. There's only so many places uh, to go. And and now this is this uh, the second escape for this guy. Yeah. What prison was it? I don't know. It was upstate. 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 Which one though? Was it Attica? Animal. 
Oh. There's no way to stay hidden in this day and age. Years ago, you could, but it's like, how can you have any kind of a job or a life or anything with without being electronically traced? Or they, Plenty of people do that. You, you, live you read on. all the time about people being caught after 30 years. But those are guys. No, but those are guys who have been gone for a long time. Like I think anyone who goes now and then just tries to start and get an identity. Like okay, now I'm gonna. Where can you get a job now? Like if you've established something in 1981, it's a little different than going out right now, fresh out of prison. Yeah. Where where this fucking. Half the times they already have your DNA from shit. Your fingerprints are on. F- and there's, your fingers and there's video cameras. There's millions of illegal immigrants that get under. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, too. Yeah, but, they, but they don't look like they don't have that look. No, but he's right. There are. There are. Um, that's a good point. But Shawshank. there's camera. There's also cameras everywhere too. Yeah. Shank had a happy ending. It sure did. It yeah. sure did. Yes, yeah, for Brooks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, what do you do now? Is this a, you know a white or a black guy getting out of jail? The, the immigrants are used. Everybody knows that they're illegal immigrants. An escaped convict, I think, is it's harder to stay just to stay under the radar. I think you got. How many of them escape now and stay escaped? Not. It's hard. It's very hard. I, I agree with you. I think it's a lot harder. Joanne Chesmore. We all know where she is, though. I know. It's just a matter of getting to Cuba. She's in Cuba. Jonathan <laughs> was here, and I wanted him to talk about his. Uh, he went to Cuba. Oh yeah. He can't talk about it. You said yeah. you, he went down there and ate her pussy and came back. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, she. But that's gonna be a, a sticking point. Like Chris Christie is going. We shouldn't have ties with them until they send her back. Like because she was a New Jersey tree. Right. I understand the emotion of that, but I've had enough of the problems with Cuba. I, I've I've fucking had it up to here with us having a hard. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia throws a blogger in jail. They're gonna give him a thousand lashes. Yeah, and they're fucking. Uh, he, he's getting all these years in jail. I'm, I'm sick and tired of being tied to that country. And we do a lot of business with Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I don't care. Right, leave Cuba but, alone. Uh, Stop why, it. Why don't they? Why don't they send her back? What is uh, the whole no point extradition there? treaty? I guess yeah. we had no relationship with them. Well, Maybe because we're kicking and screaming because we didn't get our own way. The Soviets beat us with that one. And tough shit. Mm-hmm. We didn't get our own way. Right. It happens. Who fucking cares. So Kenny, are we gonna find these uh, prison escapees. I'll look for them. Where do you think they went? I don't know. Get Somewhere him. a guy with a big dick can blend in. He's probably <laughs> at my house. <laughs> sure, he's not going to be able to wear shorts this summer. <clears throat> Absolutely not. As he's on the lamb. Guy with fucking striped, uh, <laughs> long striped pants and a giant knee bulge you on think the that's beach. that's on the APB? Yeah. Yes. Yes, has a big cock, armed and armed and lucky. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were close to Canada, but they should head to Mexico. Because everyone would think they would try to get it in, into Canada. Yeah. So you trick them and go the other way. Yeah. And I, I think uh, Canada would most likely cooperate with extradition. Oh, God, in a second they would. Yeah. Mexico might, too, though, wouldn't they? They found them. The Mexico authorities help catch guys down there. They, they they do. I've seen enough of those. I almost got away with it. And the Mexican authorities will help you if you... Yeah, it's an American prisoner. They're, they're a bit corrupt down there, though. They're very corrupt down there, but a they bit. have no interest in hiding a guy who escaped from American jail. Yeah. It makes them look good when they help out. Yeah, look, we got this guy back. It was giant dick. We're sending them back on separate flights. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cuomo's offering a hundred thousand dollars. Ooh, that's a nice piece of cake. Yes, prison worker being questioned. So. Ooh, they're looking at her pussy, seeing if it's any different than it was when she got hired. <laughs> <laughs> this looks a little beat up, madam. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> did you help them escape? No, I did not. My pussy got stretched in my sleep. I don't know who did it. <laughs> what are these two marks on your uh, your hiney cheeks? They look like prison bar. <laughs> no, they're not. I don't know what happened. Oh, back that ass right up. Yeah, I bet. I bet you, you think uh, they were having sex, and she she just was uh, out of her mind about it. Yeah, about I that mean, big dick. Yeah, maybe. Uh, He's very well endowed. He gets girlfriends any place he goes. They'll catch him, though. They'll be caught within, you know, three days. Uh, So, uh, here's the full quote. He has a way with the ladies, the source said. Another source, retired detective David Bentley, who helped put away Matt for the 1997 murder of a North Tonawanda businessman. Uh, I know North Tonawanda. 97? He's been in jail. When did he go to jail? Uh, Around there, I guess. Or a few years, maybe a year or two after that, after whatever. But when Matt's uh, cleaned up, he's very handsome and, in all frankness, very well endowed. He gets girlfriends any place he goes. That's not going to help, though, when we talk about how giant his dick is. Like, you don't need that. And just, no one's going to be looking for a guy and go, check out his bulge. I think we got the guy. Well, I mean, if, if, if you think it's the guy, but he has nothing happening in front of his shorts, then you know, all right, then most likely it's not him. I may have found a way. I'm going to take my giant dong and knock the door down. <laughs> hey, uh, you feeling like grabbing my big prick, do you, punk? 
Go ahead, touch my dick. <laughs> Go only- ahead, kiss my prick. <laughs> Hey, seems like my buddy Clint's got a giant prick. <laughs> hey, you feeling lucky, punk? Go ahead, hold my pecker. <laughs> oh, he's going to take that big thing and knock the wall down. Oh! <laughs> you had a little Johnny Carson there as well. I'm going to add it to the list of characters well, you did today. I think I'll take my big dick and knock the door down. Yes, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're making a little fun, but one of the guys is a cop killer, Kenny. Not, not good. Not good. But I mean, they added the part that the guy's well endowed. You got to, you got to go with that a little bit, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Canada will not cooperate. Remember, dear Zachary, Jimmy, they didn't cooperate with dear Zachary. That was just one judge, though. True, very true. So that's the latest on the prison uh, breakout. Um, the source likened the breakout to Clint Eastwood's escape from Alcatraz. I think they make that reference a lot when someone escapes from prison, though. In which his character leaves a dummy in his bed, just as Matt and Sweat did. Oh, these guys left a dummy in their bed, Kenny. Yeah. Did you read that part, or were you too yeah, in, he, too he, busy reading about this guy's big dick? He he left a little uh, smiley face note too that said, "Have a nice day." No kidding. Yeah. Is that true? Well, that's oh, what the papers just, reported. Yeah, just there's rub- a photo of it online. He's just rubbing it in. What was that other thing? I didn't read the the other thing you put up there, Adrian. Another source added that the pair had help on the inside, and they could just have easily had help on the outside. Right. That's a dummy in his bed. You know how many times I've fucking come and then done that? <laughs> it, was, it was an idiot girl. <laughs> to do all that, it would take weeks, if not months. This was well planned yeah. and thought out for some time. Well, they have they have time to kill him. Yeah, we had an escape plan. I said, I'm just going to ramble my way out of here. <laughs> I'm going to use the big gun. Wait, no, wait, that's not all. <laughs> I can't do arms. Go on. Yeah. What? I'll be back. I won't be back. <laughs> it's a racist note. That's a stereotypical uh, Chinaman that the guy drew. And it says, have a nice day. Where did he leave it? In the cell. I mean, what part, though? On the uh, toilet he left, or something? No, he left it on uh, on, on the pipe that they, that they cut out. Man. Like, underneath. You think they had to figure it out on the other side? No, I mean, well, they'll be able to fucking. Uh, oh, maybe they figured all this hide. out. Hide. Maybe they have a safe house somewhere. Fascinating. Richard Madden, David Sweat, um, and Cuomo offering the hundred thousand dollars. Former Marine throws coffee at Westboro Baptist Church protesters. What was Bo Biden's problem that they had a, a protest that funeral? Just, because again, they're just again they're cowards and they pick these places where they know that they've never once showed up in Compton and protest. Not to my knowledge, or in fucking Atlanta to some fucking right. gangster disciple or whatever. Yeah. I, I, they don't show up to those things. They show up to these ones, the political ones, where they know they're going to be protected by the cops. I guess he was pro fag. You know, is that what they got him for? Pro fag? Okay. Yeah, I mean that's just whatever it is. They just. Uh, they're just cut, but they're but they are dying slowly because the younger membership is, is a lot of them are leaving. Social media has really hurt Westboro Baptist Church because people are seeing this whole of the world outside, right? So they know there's a better way. Thank God for the criminal coffee thrower because of his crimes. Attention on the gospel message of WB. Yeah, yeah. All right, was the coffee really hot? Probably not, it was warm. Just warm? Yes, it was reported as warm. Well, wouldn't you just, wouldn't you, if you're going to throw coffee, why don't you go all in? Well, he said he wasn't planning on doing this. Get someone, what happened? No, no, nothing, nothing. I'm so happy I just did that. I'll tell you later. What happened? He just threw a phone. No, no, I'm not angry. I'm just so happy I just did something. Oh, man, I need to know. Well, I'll tell you in a break. Not for air? No. Well, I would say it. I know. I'm trying to, like, get it out of you. Oh, no, not going to happen. Okay. Uh, so, somebody got a nice uh, face of uh, coffee there. Yeah, the <clears throat> hopefully it wasn't hot. I mean, it, it was it was just warm. It didn't do any real damage. <clears throat> yeah, but they'll maybe sue. a bit humiliated. The guy. No, what? they don't want to press charges, and they're happy he did it because it brought more attention to them. Oh, I'm surprised. I'm actually surprised they're not pressing charges. Why? Well, because everyone's talking about uh, the the West Baptist Church today. Yeah, but they're all lawyers. All right, I'm I'm gonna get info here from Adrian. 
He said he didn't plan on doing anything rash, but when the group of three women passed by him on their way out, he couldn't contain his emotions, and he threw uh, what, you know, his cup of coffee. He's a Vietnam guy, right? Mm-hmm. Richard Pierce, a Vietnam War veteran who was arrested for throwing... They arrested him for throwing the coffee? Yeah, it's assault. Yes, ah, it is assault. coffee. Spitting on someone you can get arrested for, it. That's, that, it is assault. Uh, I'm a combat Marine. You it's assault with a, a delicious Marine weapon. <laughs> What I, what I did, I would not suggest anyone else do that. I acted very childish and foolish, and if I had to do it over again, I would, I would do it again in a minute. Richard Pierce told the Daily News Sunday, I'm a combat Marine. You could, uh, I can't tell a combat Marine anything. So, yeah. But you're, right. you make a very good point. Yeah, go to Compton. Yeah, they just don't. And not to, unless they have it, I haven't known about it. But they show up at Comic-Con to me, well, how why they, do they go to Comic-Con? Because they're fucking, again, they're just... The hell do they want there? They're just fucking weak. And they, they always want, tell the police... That, I know that they have to get permits and stuff like that. They, legally, they know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But it's amazing how they hate the cops, they hate America. But man, do they sure take some police protection. We're, like, if you're that convinced... And again, we're arguing logic with these cunts, but if you're that convinced God is on your side, just refuse the police protection. Right. Just show up and God will take care of you. Yeah. The, yeah, if you truly believe that, that's a very good point. Yeah. So there's the guy being arrested. Uh, what happens? He gets a little ticket, and that's it. Who knows? If they press charges, it could be a pain in the ass for him. I mean, he wouldn't go to jail for it, but... Uh, he would have to jail, just deal with that for a little bit. Yeah, I wish something really bad would happen during one of those protests. It won't, but I wish it would. Mm. Here's David Tell making his way down the, the hall. Oh, okay. He's uh, I've never seen anyone walk slower than David Tell right now. Well, he's a fucking, you know, he's, he's a man who knows, he knows what he's doing. and uh, he, He's taking his time. He's got his uh, newspaper these, rolled up. When are they going to make these mic things longer for the guests? That's a very, very good question. They have to. I, I like the studio very much. I just want the mic thing. Because I watch the guests leaning in. Right. John Cusack, who's almost 6'11". And it's like <laughs> the fucking poor guy is leaning down like he's fucking doing a line of coke off the table to talk to this. He, he's a giant. Yeah. 6'3", six, 6'4", six, something like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. I want to introduce David Tell. He's making his way to the studio. He's got his coffee. He's got his paper. He's got his, not a hoodie today. He's got his uh, summer wear on. Likes that, he likes that color black. Roland is just chit chatting with uh, David Tell. Here's yeah, the play by play. Roland, play him in. What you Roland, enough with the chit chat. We're uh, we're ready to introduce David Tell to the program. Hi, Dave. Hey Hi, guys. Dave. Good morning. What a remodel. Yeah. Yes. You guys really upscaled. I like it. Trying to trying to you know mix it up a little bit. What was Roland chit chatting uh, with you about? To me? Yeah. yeah, Roland. Oh, were you listening to us outside? No, <laughs> no. But we, we saw. The whole, this. Can I say it? The whole lobby is different. Yes, yes, it is. You know, and I'm trained like an old man. Like this is where I go, and then I hand them my ID. Yeah. And then they look through my bag. Then they look through it again. You know, because I, you know, look a little skeevy. Shady. So, yeah. A little shady. Shady. Exactly. Shady. <laughs> and um, I'm sorry if I'm late to both you and the and oh, the listeners. Stop. We should, okay. No, I'm sorry. It's Thanks. only ten minutes, Dave. We always right. have a little bit of a buffer. This, what did I meet? What did I miss? Oh, a whole what? bunch of chatter, some impressions, and a lot of stuff. Oh yeah, Jimmy's yeah. doing a lot of impressions today. Yeah. Jimmy's also talking about his new love for uh, the subway of New York City, the store or the actual. Because <laughs> I love it too. <laughs> no, I don't like the store. I have a real fucking. I'm a blimpy guy, and really, I've, I've actually gone. If you want the truth of it, I've had a couple of Jersey Mike subs, expecting nothing and receiving everything. Thing. They were fucking delicious. <laughs> I like wow. a good Subway but, but sub. But Subway can fucking What's wrong with my Subway? Hold your, hold your outrage. Sir. I'm angry about hold it. Hold it. You throw those banana peppers on, on a sandwich no. and it brings it all together. It's nice. utter shite. It was cut and fucking, you know, a month before. The, the bread's too, too bready. I Please. loathe it. Right. Subway, it's that's healthy. what I like to do. I like to go to Subway and start at the wrong end and build the sandwich backwards. Has anyone ever done that? <laughs> they don't, they Mayo, don't like, please. <laughs> they don't like you to do that. They don't like no, it. No. Sorry. They frown on it. The uh, first... But tank you, of the night. <laughs> <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> but Jimmy, uh, you know, Jimmy's riding the subways. He's riding oh, on the, the subway again. Yeah, for the first time. Yeah, I never ever. I know I've done it, but I always but, avoid it. But he's really liking it uh, these days. Why? Why the subway now? What happened? Don't know. No, it's just I find I'm calmer. Something about like there's too much stress with traffic. Yes, and getting to the fucking cellar. Yes, and then you take the train. You're like, I know that even if I'm late on the train, I have a good excuse. Train was late, and I know the train's not going to be that uh, late. It's very often. rare that mm. it's late, uh, unless someone gets pushed. You know, they 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 push a few guys every year. 
off the yeah. platform, and that messes up things for a while. But I love uh, the subway compared to driving anywhere in the city. Uh, even coming in from the island, I went to go see my mom on Long Island, and uh, they were stopping every car. I guess they were looking for these escaped uh, oh, convicts. They're looking on Long Island. Are they really? Oh, no, I, I don't know why they were stopping them, because I was like, was I this? wonder if it's the escape. No, well, that's a, the, the uh, Midtown Tunnel. Oh, Midtown. Yeah. Uh, oh, that no, that was my question to you. Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I thought you were on the Long Island Railroad, and they're going from car to car looking for the escape prisoners. We were just talking about that story just before you got in. No. Did they get them? No. They did not get them, but... Uh, <laughs> then I'm still a deputy. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, before that, I was just a white guy with a gun. Now I'm a deputy. The, the one guy, though, we're learning is well endowed. They needed that in the story. Mm. Like, they're talking, he's got a real big dick. Really? Really big. That'll limit it down. Yes, yeah, so that's what I'm saying, because it's summer. <laughs> if you see a guy in, you know, at the beach with very lo you know, long pants, it, he might be the guy covering up his big dick. Well, they shouldn't catch him so quickly, then. No. <laughs> yeah, let him sling that thing around. <laughs> yeah, really. What else did he miss? Uh, so we did the, the prison thing. Right. We did the subways that he's really into lately. Oh, he's into feet. You're into feet. He's, he's very into feet right now. What a, what a makeover. I've gotten more into them, yeah. Do you really? like feet or no? As a, For the eroticism of them, or no? Yeah. No. I find that's the ugliest part of the body, and uh, I'm oh, not, not into a it. Thing? Okay. Not at all. No. With David Tell on that. <laughs> I'm not, I don't find them erotic, and I, I know there's a whole kitsch of, uh, yeah. of adult movies that uh, deals with feet. Is that your thing? Not the movies, no. I don't want to watch the movies. Okay. Just in real life. Just, in, just seeing a foot. Yeah, sometimes. They can, they can be horrendous, too. Wow. They can be really ugly. Yeah, no. I, what's, I, the, what's the worst foot you'd, you'd still be attracted to? I, I'd have to see it individually. I mean, I like them larger on a girl, but I don't, I don't like uh, Do the toes have to be feet. perfect? No, I mean, I like them to be long, off. but, uh, you know, uh, off, like, I don't like corns on the top of them or what by about, someone who wears too many heels. What mm -hmm. about the toes that kind of cross over? I mean, I prefer that they don't have that. Just or, a normal looking foot. Or, That's or, it. or the left turn on the, uh... The left turn. <laughs> or is yeah. it the right turn? I guess it depends what, uh... Which what, piggy what gets you going? <laughs> I don't know. There's really not one. Like that's a nice foot. That's a big foot. That girl that we're looking at the monitor. She's she a giant. Well, yeah, I don't like that. But she's big feet. She's she like clown shoes. She's the woman with the biggest feet in Europe. Yeah, that's who is this? Let me see her body though. We just googled it. She's not. She her body is. Uh, How that's tall a big is foot. she? She. I'm is, gonna guess she has. Yeah, she's a little too big for me, dude. She's a giant she's a lady. Giant. That's oh not for me. God. That doesn't do it for that's, me. You know they have that show. Uh, I think it's the Legend of Mike Dodge, where the guy doesn't wear any shoes. He's out in the uh, the wilds, yeah. and he just like walks around with his feet. And he and he says like if your feet if you if you never wore shoes or something like that like they'll eventually get calloused up so much that it's almost like a shoe. Yeah, and you can walk on anything. Yeah. So you think what I'm thinking? You save a lot of money. Without buying shoes, if you just uh, do the homework, you know, you just go out there and scuff them up, and then you don't need to buy shoes. Yeah, but then they're cold. Can't you can't scuff up the top of them and make them weather resistant? Mm, you're right. I, don't uh, know about I like that. a nice warm foot. It's like they say, always <laughs> keep your feet dry in the nom. That's what you got to do. <laughs> Survival host, no shoes. Um, yeah, he he's uh, a guy who lives out all the stuff. You know, uh, one of the, uh, the nature guys. Yeah, we had uh, we had him in Les. You did Les Stroud, that guy. I think I think he does stuff with Les Stroud. I think his name's Cody London. Oh, okay. ah, Cody London doesn't like to wear a good shoe. I like. Yeah, a good I hope shoe. I'm getting the right guy. But yeah, I, I noticed he was like just running through all, the through the wilds. But what know? about all the shit that could bite you? Yeah, yeah the brambles, as they say. Yeah, those maybe an ant or two. An ant, dirty um, feet. What's the gopher wash? hole? <laughs> Sprain. <laughs> Step on a beehive. <laughs> I knew wish you had some fucking shoes. Oh. So, Jim, when you're on the subway, do you get recognized a lot? Because I assume that's uh, not really, really no why one, you're doing No it. one cares on the train. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no one cares on the train. It's great. What did you do? Ah, oh, fuck. Are you all right? Yeah. Oh, no. I just squashed my middle finger in between the chair and the console. Oh. Fuck, did that hurt. No, nah, people Continue. don't usually recognize me on the subway. They don't care. Once in a while, someone gets a hello, but <sighs> they don't care. There's... They just come up with a generous hello. Yeah. Hello, friend. Hey, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could sit down and listen to my woes for a second. <laughs> Some great See, musicians down there. I, I take the subway, but I never sit down. Right. I like to stand like I'm, I'm like ready, like just in case something's going to happen, you know? I do. Plus, uh, you know, you give a seat up for a lady. Yeah, right. I've offered it. No one's ever taken it. All right. You so you need a seat, bitch? <laughs> you got to sit down. <laughs> Looks like someone put a little seed in that womb. You want a seat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he also uh, was trying to take a peek at a girl's vag on oh, the subway. Oh, common. come who, on, Jim. Who hasn't done that? But it no, is summer. We, we've yeah. all tried, but, but not many of us have been caught. We've all been caught at one point. Though. She, she, uh, she caught him taking a look. Really? Yeah. 
Like that movie, um, that old Charles Bronson movie, Kinjite, whatever that is. Well, it was about kitty porn, yeah, the forbidden uh, delicious uh, <laughs> film. That was a good one. <laughs> Kinjite, forbidden yeah. knowledge, or whatever it's yeah, called. Yeah, forbidden uh, fun. Mm. <laughs> she caught me trying to take a pee to the old cunt. <laughs> Just a little peekaroo. But it is so difficult getting around town, that's so true. Like, uh, you know, these people like jump in a cab, and like, you know, now this, it, it's, it's almost twice as long driving anywhere here. Well, know? that's because of the way, what they've done with the roads. Oh, they, yeah? They cha- is, no, <clears throat> they changed the traffic patterns, uh, the, uh, the lights. Is the the what is this, Channel One? <laughs> well, because de Blasio was obsessed with all the people that are being run over, and so he he made everyone slow down, and they, he changed the patterns of the lights, so you can't, and when you're on the avenues and stuff, you can't go as far as you used to before they, you know, uh, turn them to red for you, but the point here is, it, people are still getting run over all oh, the place. Right. It but didn't make a, a bit of difference, because, but now it's just a hassle for everybody. Well, the slow traffic started before de Blasio, started Bloomberg, because they have all these bike the lanes. The planters and the bike lanes. Yeah, they're losing, you that. lost lanes of fucking, of travel. You Half the lanes are gone, or Ten, you know, twenty percent of the lanes are gone. I think we should get rid of those planters already. We don't need them. Yeah, I don't. I don't like it. I, I don't like people sitting outdoors in fucking in, in September and October. And enjoying themselves? It. No, sit at home. Like someone's enjoying themselves. Go to a park, not the fucking middle of the street. But there's nowhere to go. Too yeah. bad. So that's Move why out of New York. That's why they did all that shit because there's nowhere to go after a while. That's good, except in traffic. It's great. You want to sit there and have a coffee? Fucking sit inside or stand outside. But and no one ever do... looks like they're relaxing. It's uh, they always look like they're exhausted and they're about to make like a hard ch- because choice it's, because. There's nowhere to sit. They don't let you sit anywhere because of the homeless people. Put more seats around. I, I think that uh, no, there's more sitting going on lately. Don't, yeah. don't, aren't I guess there you, a few benches out there? A few extra benches. You can't really lay down on those benches though. And the we, city bikes. Put them on the sidewalk. Get them out of the fucking street. Whoa, Jimmy! I'm telling you, that's my that's my but, campaign. But how about you, a city bench where you can like uh, you know like sign up and you get to sit down somewhere? That's nice. Yeah, you swipe your credit card. Yeah, you get oh, I can sit here. <laughs> you, but you discover the subway, uh, so you don't need this anymore. You don't need this stress in your life. I you still, don't have to worry I, about this stuff. I still have a car. Every hundredth sit, you get to lay down. That would be great. That could be like some kind of <laughs> you got frequent sitter card. Sir, get up. It's his turn. He's going to sleep here tonight. <laughs> but who punches, who punches the card for you? I, you swipe it. I don't know. Oh, you swipe? I would, I would like the punch system. No, automatic swipe. Automatic swipe? Uh, Jim, do you go to the front of the car and press your little face up against the window? I like to look and pretend that I'm driving the train. <laughs> yes, I do. The choo-choo? I do like the first car, which is probably the most dangerous in an accident. But I find that, and I hate to break this secret, but it's, I find that's usually the one that's the least crowded. You have to walk all the way to the end of the platform. For really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's this is great. You you're becoming me. one of the people. I like that. You're really learning. That's right. You should, you should walk around and go, hi, my name's Jim. I'm running for something. Yeah. Yeah, really. <laughs> I understand your pain. Yes. Uh, you, you check out the Triple Crown. Is that your thing, David? I love it. I didn't get to see it, and I didn't get to bet on it, but I had a feeling that this was the one. This is the Triple Crown. This is the one. And the guy's like, a, he's engaged, right? I think so, yeah. Oh, this is so awesome. It's a wonderful story. Are they going to get married at Belmont? You I, think? I believe that would be the place to do it. <laughs> Have, Have you ever, been there? <laughs> I've never been to Belmont. Is it is it a nice place? Uh, when they're not running this. Supposedly this the restaurant race? is really nice, but the uh, the other area uh, not not as great. Uh, the snack bar area. Well, you know that's where like me and some of the other jockeys hang in between races. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some of the sports book guys. But why why the Belmont as far as the Triple Crown? Because it's a bit of a drop off as far as the Kentucky Derby goes. That's and true. The Belmont. It's a bit of a drop off. <laughs> what's it's the more, other one? Kentucky it's more Derby. Blue collar. The Kentucky, and then it's out uh, west. Uh, what's we call it? No, it's it's uh, Baldy Moore. No. Oh. It's in, it's in Baldy Moore. What's it the, called? The Preakness. Oh. The Preakness. Uh, uh, the Kentucky Derby is uh, all about class, and the Preakness, slight drop off, a little bit of a drop off. And then Belmont, I'm saying, even though I'm a Long Island guy, it's a big drop off from yeah. the Kentucky Derby. But that's all we got. I mean, we got to hold on to this. I mean, really, our, our history of horse racing. You know? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> we can't hold a real team, so we might as well just uh, you know throw all in on the horses. Do they race overseas? There's got to be big races. What are the big races in Europe or whatever? No one cares. No, nobody does they that. Don't? Yeah, uh, the do. one guy that used to be great when we were growing up, he went Steve over Carlton. there. Yeah, he went over there to run in that circuit. I thought that would be like reason. When, I thought it'd be like in basketball, like when you're not in, like like hitting it, you go overseas and you play for Italy for uh, three, <laughs> right. three years. That's what we do with our horses. They're like, huh. They get know. sent overseas. Well, I did know that during the race, none of the uh, carriages were moving. All the horses were, <laughs> <laughs> were glued. <laughs> were glued listening. Europe has, England has their own triple crown. <laughs> they they, they, they have, do. They have their own triple crown. Oh, England, yeah. They, they're huge into horses over there. So why wouldn't American Pharaoh go over there and see what uh, he could do over there? That's a hard sport to even like, kind of like you know, quarterback on because uh, do you know how to ride a horse? I don't. Hell, I rode a horse in camp. Yeah, my horse's name was Jim, spelled G Y M, 
and I'll never forget that I was riding in camp. It was very bizarre. Yeah. And there were some like girls that were like, I was probably 13, and I didn't want to go to Camp Mason, but I did. I was forced. And the guy, my buddy, he reminds me of Stanhope for some reason, but I didn't know who Stanhope was at that point. But now I look back, I just associate Doug Stanhope. He looked like him. And I'll never forget, we were riding horses, and I was complaining because my horse was a little wild. It didn't listen that well, and I was very scared. Mm-hmm. And I remember the guy, my buddy, went talking about my horse. He goes, ah, Jim's a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> and and the two girls like our counselors heard him yeah and it was so uncomfortable and yeah. silent because uh. he of course saying cunt in front of women and was it one of those where like the horses slowly go up a trail like yes. everybody's behind each other yeah my horse just seemed like it had like a fucking palsy and was always ready to fall off the trail I was horrified maybe raising it, its head angrily <laughs> maybe it just felt weird energy on its back probably so what happened to the kid for calling nothing it Jim was just very uncomfortable <laughs> Very uncomfortable. Nothing happened, but I mean. So did that give you more insight into the race? I mean, none whatsoever. It's my only horse riding experience at all. And I was going to, but my friend Chris had a mishap a few years ago, and I said, uh, <laughs> no Your friend Chrissy? Yeah. Yeah, he did. <laughs> One of the jockeys stopped sitting on the horse. Oh, that's a good question. Yes. Is it really? I see when I they, when, to when they isn't it called cantering? Yeah, Isn't that what that is? That's when, when they're, no, shit. no, their that's leg, when they're slow. Their legs got to fucking hurt by the end of that race. Those jockeys are in great shape. <clears> they get a good thigh muscles. They, they don't sit on the horse anymore. No, they're uh, kind of crouching above it. Yeah, we went. Me and my friends, we went to Belmont one time, and it was the Trotters. You know that? That's with the buggy. Yes, that's kind of like the funny cars of the of the of that world. And uh, <laughs> you know, you really don't care. You you know, it's just a good time. You're hanging out. You're having a couple of beers. You know, you're betting betting a couple of bucks. So, around. But this is like for the real deal people. You know, this is like you know, this is the uh, like what what's the prize again for the for the jockey? What does he what does he do? Uh, I don't know citizenship. So, All right, he gets that. <laughs> but what does the horse get? Like, how do they celebrate the horse? I mean, I know they put it out to stud, and they never have to run it. But I'm like, what's the what's the after after? For Probably the horse? like a sugar cube. Yeah, a, a, yeah, an apple, an apple, maybe yeah, something sugary and sweet. He's been dieting. <laughs> Piece of cake. Yeah, I, they spoil him. <laughs> nice probably, pet. I bet you they jerk mm. it off. Really? After the race, mm. get some of that sperm out immediately. Mm. Mm. Because that sperm's got to be worth a yeah, lot it's worth of money. A lot, yeah, good double-fisted cock pump. That's a good word. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, when does the horse retire? Is that it, or does it uh, run? I run think it's well, right after that. That's it. So that's it. It usually that's puts out a book and then it's done. <laughs> 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 a little tell-all. Adrian, look that shit up. Is American Pharaoh now done? Even though this horse is pretty amazing, but there's nothing else to really run. Or do, I, I bet you it goes overseas for some fancy, no. fancy thing. And no, that, I, I read. Uh, I read oh. this morning that he's going to run again. He is. Yes. Where? Where though? I don't know. Horse track. <laughs> No, but I mean, what race? I After you win the Triple Crown, why would you do that? You should fight him- Mayorweather. That's what you should do. <laughs> There's no one can beat him. They ought to put him out and they ought to make him fucking lug people through Central Park. <laughs> and then they could do a reality show when Mr. Fancy gets to fucking <laughs> slum it with the regular people. <laughs> <laughs> How many? How many? You know, like uh, how many people knew uh, who who came in second? Like what happens to that? That frosted. Horse? Frosted, frosted. A lot of people had frosted uh, winning this thing. Well, yeah, that's a that's kind of a pot friendly name. Yeah. So I could see why people went for that one. Frosted. But. I don't know much about frosted, but <laughs> it came in second. It. Damn. Came in second. I think it was five lengths. Oh, oh frosted got killed. <laughs> so what did what what's happened? So he has to like start the whole process again. Like he he's kind of like, oh man, I have to go back and. Is this race every horse. year or every other year? It's every year. Every year. Every year. Every year, okay. every year they go for. Uh, well, they try for the triple crown. This is the first. First time, like you said, in 37 years. Yeah. That's crazy. Z- uh, Zayat will let trainer Bob Baffert construct a schedule for Farrow to figure out when the horse is ready to run again. The Breeders' Cup Classic in October could be a potential target with its $5 million in prize money. That, uh, yes. So... So it won't run until October, most likely. That's where they have, like what you were talking about, with the release, you know, the Breeders' Cup. The after breeder. that, that's when, that's when it becomes a full tilt, yeah. When they start dumping load after load Come after festa. load. Yeah. yeah. All mm-hmm. right, let's get it. So then what do they do? <clears throat> how, much, how many loads do they get out of this thing? Just a lot. Gallons. Mouthfuls. <laughs> but, but endless? <laughs> And what happens to these loads? They Where put do they them go? in pussies and they sell them. Horse jizz. <laughs> there you go. Not to be cons- not potable. Not potable jisms. <laughs> yeah, they sell horse loads for a lot of fucking money, and you breed them. So is this the off season now for the jockey? I guess not. They never have an off season. Yeah, like, they no can't one wants eat now. Come. They can't I do think, anything. 
I think the jockey life. Uh, was on a bunch of horses uh, over the, at <clears throat> Belmont. Yeah, you really? would think they would just save the jockey for the one race where the guy, you know, NASCAR. where the horse might win the triple crown. No, but I think he ran a few races that day on Sunday. These guys have a lot of. It, it, it's 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 probably the most dangerous yet least you know like the chances of of uh, you know making yeah. a good living at it is very it's very difficult. You're doing fucking eighty miles an hour on something that doesn't want you on it. Right? Is it eighty miles an hour? No. <laughs> Amazing. I'm just kidding. I know. Uh, Tommy. I'll be in, impressed when a horse wins with Ralphie May on its back. That's when I'll be impressed <laughs> with a fucking horse. <laughs> Finally. Then you would bow. <laughs> Tommy in Brooklyn. What do you got, Tommy? Hey, good morning. Good morning. You'd be crazy to run that horse again. Big Brown, a couple of years ago, uh, won the uh, Derby. Right, His, his uh, offspring ran this Derby, uh, Dormont. Okay, yeah. Uh, they get a lot of money for every load. A lot of money. Sounds really? like me. <laughs> you race that horse and it breaks its leg, and you gotta you gotta uh, euthanize it. Yeah. You know, there's too many investors. Tommy, he's gonna run breeders. That's October, so they got four months to get a lot of jizz out, though. That's, That's a lot. Uh, they're probably yeah. like, you know, they're just jerking that ho horse off a few times a day. How many times a day if you had an American Pharaoh? How many, how many times do you think you jerk the horse off? I would literally have him being jerked off until someone's like, my arm is giving out, <laughs> and then someone else would just take over in mid-stroke. All I know is it's a good life for that horse after he wins. Yes. Of yeah. course. I heard that even if they do break something, that they still keep him around for the, for the stud of it. They try to. Who was the one that hurt his leg a few years ago? Uh, they really... Mm. Is that horse dead? Do you remember the one with... Arm or something. Wait a minute. What was that horse's name? Barbaro. Sorry. Is he yeah. dead? Babaro. Oh, I forgot about him. He died? Yeah. Oh. He broke his leg. Yeah. Did they, yeah. Did they try to yank cum out of him on the thing while I was fucking... <laughs> right before, before you shoot him, let me give him a fucking... Yeah, get, get one out. Do you remember <laughs> when we were growing up, the, the horse that killed right on the track? Oh, there's been a bunch at, of yes. at, at one of the Triple uh, Crown races? Yep, just for fucking, just sleeping with a horse of a different race. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's guy caught him with a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking tragic. They went out there with, a, I think, a shotgun Yeah, I remember. I remember And then they that. covered him up, and, uh, and everyone was just horrified. Like, you couldn't, you couldn't do this, you know, off the track somewhere. Can you look that story up? I think we're... we're we're dating ourselves, but I think it's like the late I, 70s, yeah. early 80s. Oh, boy. See if you can find that. That's when they still shot him. I think now they just inject him. True. Don't even give him the, the glory of being shot. Do, do you feel like they shot him that day, Dave? I remember hearing something about that. I'm not, that, was in, uh, that was in that Belmont, wasn't it? I don't know. We're, we're looking it up now. Let's say hi to Steve in D.C. Uh, that's not like Steve. an altercation in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, so the stud fees, before he won the Triple Crown... It was going to be fifteen thousand dollars a pop. Now that he's won the triple crown, a uh, triple crown, it's a hundred thousand dollars a pop. A horse can actually breed up to a hundred uh, uh, baby horses, if you will, a year, and they can live for up to twenty-five years. So a hundred thousand dollars a pop—that's going to be some good change for the next ten, twenty years. But how many how many loads can you get out of them at a hundred thousand dollars a pop? Wow, that's a lot of that's some expensive cum. And how do you do it? <laughs> Well, they actually put him out uh, to pasture with the mayor, and they actually have sex. Two mares, one bucket. So they, how do they figure? Out, <laughs> how do they figure out the mayor is a is a good match? Yeah. Well, I mean that's that's uh, obviously that's hit or miss, and that's where you pay the. That's why you have to kind of roll the dice and pay the fee, and hopefully you get a. I mean, uh, you know, four red resource at the end. They're doing it wrong. I would set up some kind of like, sort of like a lemonade stand and just be selling this shit right on the street. <laughs> I bet you there's like And then a, let the people figure out what they want to do with American Pharaoh's uh, sperm in the test tube you get. Yeah. I bet you that's, they have to keep it under lock and key, guarded. Oh, I that's would like, imagine. Yeah. White gold, they call it. White gold. <laughs> <laughs> it was, David Teller was Ruffian. The horse's name was Ruffian, I believe. Well, he went out like his name. Uh, went hard. Am I right, Adrian? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't think Ruffian was killed on the track. Uh, Ruffian's just one someone of the more... that knows more about this shit than me. Please call. I, I I remember as a kid seeing some horrific scene play out on like Wide World of Sports or something, and they killed a the horse right on the track. They had no choice. It broke his leg. That's true. I, I do remember that. That was like a big moment. It was. It, and they put a tarp over it, and then uh, Jim it, McKay had some some witty thing to say, and they moved on to. It was their Kennedy assassination or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember the barrel? horses have never forgotten it. Remember barrel jumping on Wide World of Sports? Oh, none of that fun's out there anymore. What a dumb sport. <laughs>
It used to be an Olympic sport, I believe. And then they realized, well, man can't jump over any more barrels. They've hit their limit. For a horse to be studded, it has to mount. Okay. Wait, so if it's... So it has to be a natural. Uh... Nah, they 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 fucking mount shit, and they they I think they can come off. This is a fake thing. They mount dumb horses. Don't know. Well, they when they have the farm, the breeding farm. That's where like you know they retire them there, and they and they have the the women that they uh, the what call the mares that they want them to uh, mate with. And I know like uh, what's his name? There's a couple of like really famous guys who are into horses, like Shatner. I know is a big horse guy. William mm -hmm. Shatner's uh, Captain Kirk. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like. A horse. <laughs> I will beam it up. That's a big investment in the horse thing. Yeah. Uh, this guy remembers the horse being killed on TV. Kevin in South Carolina, go ahead. Good morning, Opie. Hey. hey, I'm about your age, you know, 39. And uh, mm. I remember watching that horse race. I swear it was like a two-horse race, but that horse, like, broke his leg right there on the track. And they're like, oh, crap, now we got to kill it. Um, well, they're I saying they, they're saying eight bells from two thousand eight. No, man, I'm I'm, yeah, I'm this is you got to go way back. This is like seventy seven, seventy eight. I want to say I was, you know, twelve, thirteen year old kid, but yeah. it was rough here. That's the one I'm thinking of when you said that. What a cool like name that. for a horse, ruffian. I feel ruffian. like it had something to do with it's ruffian. <laughs> what do they say All about right. ruffian from nineteen seventy five? All right, okay. thanks, Kevin. Uh, David Tell is in studio today. What are you promoting, Dave? Me? As we look up this I just came down for the fellowship of uh, nice. Nature Banter. Just nice. to get out of the house and talk to a couple of friends. Yeah. Thank Very you good. for letting me be. Uh, no, I guess I got some road stuff coming up. Yeah. Driving up. Uh, I was just in Rochester, by the way, your hometown. Well, I had a great time. I'm from Long Island, but I certainly love my years in Western New York. There you go. I did yeah. about 10 they years love up, you up there, there. So it's almost like a. Both of you home. guys. Very. You, you very do Weezy's loved. show? Uh, yes, the brother Weeze. Yeah. Uh, I have to say one thing. Like, that guy, I think he was like the first. Like, when I was, like, on the road and, like, I did radio, it was like, I met him and I was like, wow, this is cool. He was such a character, you know? Yeah. And I was, like, so excited to see him again. And, like, you know, he looked great. Yeah. I thought for sorry, you know, he he looks younger than me. He yeah. looked all cleaned up and everything buffed up. He's trying. He's trying to stay healthy. So that was cool. And, uh, you know, I played the club up there, the comedy club, and it was, it was cool. But, you know, the problem with Upstate is, like, once it gets nice out... These people have been like almost snowbound <laughs> for like months and months and months. Once it's nice out, you can't like you feel bad for them. Like they say, come back inside now, yeah, yeah. and you know, listen to me. I mean, like so they just want to be out. Yeah, so they, they've been uh, snowbound. I I I am doing. Uh, I guess uh, where am I heading? Providence, which is always fun, and then um, um, I'm hitting. Uh, you have it there, right? Vermont, Maine. I, I don't the know. Stephen King tour. I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> yes, Derry. <laughs> I got a uh, train wreck comedy tour. Amy Schumer, Judd Apatow, David Tell, and friends. Right? These, oh yeah, that's my other tour. These comedians will travel across America and Canada starting June 14th and finish uh, June 21st. Is, but that's not what you're promoting. Yeah, no, that that's the tour I'm doing with Amy for her movie. I'm in it for a couple seconds. Jim, you're in the movie, right? No, I don't think so. You're not? No. See, Jim is the better actor, so I, I don't see why Jimmy, that didn't happen. Jimmy, the scene was, I actually he saw filmed the, for the movie. I saw the scene, and I was happy with it. I was very happy with you it. You were? They said they cut it for time. I, I'm, I'm, so I'm assuming that's correct, because they spent a lot of money on the scene. Really? Yeah. Um, but I've, when I saw it and did ADR for it, I was like, when they told me that they were going to cut it, I was like, fuck, man, this is, it must be awful. But then I was like, well, it was actually funny. I really was, I was pleased with it. Oh, good. Mm. So, but wow. it doesn't, does me no good. Um, no, you really are an actor. I thought you were just kidding around. You were, were, were you upset as an actor that like you were cut out of something? Sure. I mean, yeah, yeah. but I mean, I understood it. It's part of it. It's nothing personal. It's yeah. not, uh, you know. It yeah, but you'll be is. in the DVD select, uh, whatever that is. That's never, <laughs> no? <laughs> <doesn't> <laughs> Do they still have that? I don't right. even know. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I'm in it for a couple seconds, and uh, you know, there's a lot of great comics in Colin. He's in it, and uh, Jed Apatow is the director, and you know, Amy's just awesome. She rocks out and uh, so funny. So nice. I'm glad to do it, and we're doing this. It's for charity. The shows are for charity, but I think it's also to like give uh, the fans a chance to uh, to look at the movie. So it's kind of oh, cool. that's great. It's a lot of flying. That's all I know. But the week before, that's starting Wednesday. I'm doing my own little tour, the uh, Pay My Mortgage tour. So, so it's nice to check that out too. Go to I, my site, Davidthal.com. No, no, let me do that better for you. Yeah. Uh, Comedy Connection in Providence, Rhode Island. Yes. Wednesday. Bang. Thursday, Higher Ground in Burlington, Vermont. Nice. Friday, Flying Monkey in Plymouth, New Hampshire. This is going to be good. 
You're picking a nice place to go in the summer. I know. Beautiful I, I, up there. I'm up yes. against the uh, whatever. You're doing the dying homosexual tour. <laughs> 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 and uh, Saturday, the State Theater in Portland, Maine. Beautiful nice. for David Tell. I'm loving it. DavidTell.com for everything he's up to. I'm uh, ready to go. I just got an oil change. It's on. It's on. <laughs> uh, the story of Ruffian is pretty tragic, but it's still not the one I'm thinking of. Maybe this is all in my stupid fucking brain. It never happened. But Ruffian was leading when she said snapped two bones in her right foreleg in uh. 1975 at the Belmont. However, she refused to stop running, further damaging her leg until it was reduced to a flopping mess. Uh. I think there's video of this, by the way. Wow. Emergency surgeons say Ruffian woke up from the anesthesia and began running in place on the floor as if the race was still on, causing damage in the operating room. And breaking an elbow in the process. But that's somebody who's we're talking about an abusive jockey or owner. When you're like, I better keep running, or else the punishment's <laughs> going to be really severe. Or maybe a real competitor, Jim. <laughs> no, I think that's a little different. As such, they were forced to put her down. But that's not the one that happened on the track in front of everybody. By the way, you know, Spike TV is editing fucking Clint Eastwood's Caitlyn Jenner joke out. Well, a real guys network. <laughs> Spike TV. Who's who's joking? I, I just I just Clint Eastwood made a joke when he was presenting something on Spike and they're editing it out. Really? Did it did it air? Not yet. No, it wasn't even that oh, bad. Oh, so they a joke. taped the Spike, but it wasn't thing. even a nasty joke. What was the joke? I'll tell you. Why the fuck is Caitlyn Jenner so fucking sacred? I don't know. I don't God know. Almighty, stop it! You could you should be able to make fun of everything. Jim, I'm a hundred percent behind Bruce Jenner's change to a hundred percent, but it's still make funnable. Of course, it fucking is. asshole country. Hold on, yeah. let, let me see. Uh, he said something like uh, the joke, which Spike TV has said, which, which the guys network has said they will cut out. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess this was a, again on Lifetime as well. <laughs> he was present. He was introducing San Andreas star Dwayne the Rock Johnson. You know, because the guys network. Um, he introduced him, he said, uh, by comparing him to other famous athletes, such as Jim Brown and Caitlin somebody. That was it? That's the joke. Oh, my God. We're losing our minds in this it's country. Over. Wow. What a guy's network. Boy, they really, they really captured guys. Uh, Let's get Clint Eastwood on the rock. Caitlin somebody. Cut it! Oh, Cut God. it! Well, the good news is we found what you can scream in the subway now. This is something <laughs> you can take to the subway and scream. This is your, um, this is your preaching. I have had enough... Of this fucking treating Caitlyn Jenner like she is a fucking, like, like the second coming. or, or Enough! Yeah, I'm, I'm happy for this person. Good for you. I think it's great you're doing it. Support is real. I'm not just lip servicing the support. I genuinely mean it. Go fuck yourself, though, as far as not being a subject that can be poked fun at. Late night guys are fucking, I think, pretty much laying off it. Yeah. Bill Maher made a lot of jokes. Good. Uh... Good for him. Real time this weekend. Good for Bill Maher. A lot of people dislike uh, Mr. Maher, but uh, he's right on with that. I can see if, if, look, if you're doing a joke about how fucking, you know, Bruce Jenner is getting his dick cut off and you're doing gay bashing jokes, like, all right, I understand why a network doesn't want that. But why, why is it, is it fucking well, sacred ground? Wait, what is the headline on this? That, uh, Bill Maher to pronoun, uh, pronoun, pronoun police. Pronoun police. Caitlyn Jenner is not, not Rosa, Rosa Parks. Parks. Right. Good, good for him. He's right. What are they trying to say here, there, uh, Travis? Let's see. Uh, you know, uh, do we have any of his uh, jokes that we could play? Is there a uh, video of this? I'm not sure if there's video I didn't video know Clint was doing time now. Hasn't he earned a... <laughs> <laughs> Here's a little one I came up with on God, that set annoys me. Harry. Because they fucking... Oh. They call themselves like a guy's network. Like, this is for, you know, oh, place no for way. extreme sports and MMA and guy's stuff. Right. And then they cut a, a Caitlyn Jenner And you joke. can't get more masculine than Clint Eastwood interview, introducing The Rock... <laughs> There's not more testosterone is, yeah. in any introduction. Cock and balls introducing cock and balls. That is horse jism balls. right there. That's horse jizz. <laughs> and he makes not even a nasty Caitlyn Jenner joke. Caitlyn somebody. Cut it! Right. Get rid of that! The networks, the networks just don't want to, um, they, they don't want the hassle of it. Uh, it's not like they're better people. And they just like, ugh, this is, no, we don't want it. And it sucks for, uh, you know, Whatever. I mean, like, you're right. The, the the whole thing with Spike. I remember when I did the, one of their, like, whatever, Guys' Choice Awards or something like that. Well, Guys' was, Choice. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was like this kind of faux guys. Like, you know, you like uh, vodka, right? You like Maxim Models. Yeah, you know, it was like that kind of thing. Cornball shit. And by the way, Oscar Pistorius is being recommended for August jail release. Boy, they really don't care about shooting models by a toilet in that fucking country. <laughs> why, are they, why are they recommending that? I don't know. I guess he did his time.
Unbelievable. Look, we got to take a break. We could talk about that, certainly. Uh, we got the Bill Maher clip. I want to okay. hear how he handled Caitlyn Jenner and saying that she's not Rosa Parks. That's going to, well, it's already causing some, uh, some, some people to talk. I don't know how people hate Bill Maher. Like, yeah, he's really liberal, but he's not a language cop. I don't know how fucking, a lot of people don't like his politics. That's fine. But I mean, he makes fun of anything. There's, he doesn't ever tell people yeah. that she get in trouble for what they say. I love Bill Maher. Goes after Muslims and every everybody else. Makes I mean, fun of everybody. He goes everybody. for the funny. And uh, what else was there? Oh, uh, with you guys in studio, of course, we got to talk about Jerry Seinfeld talking about college kids oh, and right? how they're too PC. We got a nice what? Little, we got a nice <laughs> little clip uh, to play for everybody. Dave Attell is here. DaveAttell.com, dot com because he's he's all over the place. But yeah, Wednesday, tons of road, tons of road. Wednesday, Comedy Connection in Providence, Rhode Bang. Island. Thursday, Higher Ground in Burlington, Vermont. Mm. Friday, Flying Monkey in Plymouth, New Hampshire. State Theater in Portland, uh, Maine on Saturday. Thank I, you. Jimmy's By the way, one, one bit of follow-up. Yeah, go to JimNorton.com if you're interested. If you're not, what am I going to tell you? I'm in New York. I got D D Caroline's and, and DC coming up. Uh, the on-sale, of course, wasn't told to me by people who fucking booked the gig, so I'm just... Whoa! I'm, I'm, I mentioned it, but it was already on sale, and I didn't know it. The Borgata, July 10 and 11, I'm doing those shows. Okay. Um, and and who else is on the show? Uh, American I mean, Farrow? Yes, yeah, American <laughs> Farrow. Putting his big dick in my face. <laughs> and uh, I got one bit of communicate about the horses. I'll Ooh. bet my life... He's not going to be put out to pasture. He mounts a fake mare and finishes, and it's then put right into the mare. No way they would risk him getting hurt mounting a live mare. I guess horses, when they fuck, it's rough. They get a little violent. Even Unlike that's when I PC. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we go, oh, the mare technically hasn't consented. A fake mare named. I just want to uh, know how many loads they get off Off the... Do they do this just for years afterwards? For as often as the horse wants. I bet you one of the, the, the stable guys has to taste it. It's ready. <laughs> it's ready. <laughs> That's some good jisms. Or he fingers a mare and then he gets behind the fake one and he puts it under the horse's nose. <laughs> <laughs> a dirty Sanchez <laughs> for my lady. And what are the odds that sperm turns out to be another great horse? Mm. I guess there's a lineage that you can trace. Sure, there's a lineage. I, I wouldn't know. I, I certainly increases your odds. Yeah, but. it's good for your skin. Yeah. Well, it's weird, like when uh, you know they're waiting on the b birth after this, you know, billion dollar uh, sperm thing, and uh, a dog comes out. Yeah. What <laughs> happened? Or they, or they give it birth and they start raising. They're like, oh no, it's James McCartney. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> All right, Not a little later same. today, uh, you can stick around for Dr. Ruth. You have to tell. I love She's it. going to talk about the penis. I'll be doing my impressions all throughout the morning. She's a great, she's it's a the new Jim Norton. Let's try to get some asses in those seats. Can you talk to her as Dr. Ruth? Dr. Ruth? I don't want to not confuse the people. Yeah, that's true. I'll talk to her as Can I say that? Dr. On. Ruth did this great documentary on like all the, um, like these subgroups in Israel. The Haradim and all the all these like weird um, small groups of people like it was so interesting like she's she's a really interesting person that's all I'm saying. There's like, more to her than the, the sex thing. Yeah, the SEX, not all that. Though. Oh, all right. We might have to ask her about that. Love it. Thank God, David Tell is here today.